So there's going to be huge changes to my original plan of how I was going to build the platform bed. I'm not going to do the flip up section and the reason for that is if I flipped it up this section here would be a huge wall which would end up being right at the rear door there and that would be really inconvenient for getting stuff in and out when we need to. In addition to that I have decided I'm not going to contour around the molding on the bottom section or the wheel well instead I'm just going to build straight sections for the bottom and put the two foot wide platform on top. I think that'll still give me the room that I'm looking for as far as storage and the areas that aren't covered on the sides I could probably still use as storage when the box is in there. Instead the new plan is actually so I know this is a really rough drawing, but the new plan is to build straight boxes or straight walled boxes that fit into the back. And when I measured with the back seat up, accounting for the angle and at 10 and a half inches high, um, 28 inches from this back molding here to the back of the seat. Again, it, that, that's at about 10 and a half inches high. And then from here to here, that's the wheel wells. There's 42 inches, so I'll cut the top section 21 inches wide, which will have boards that go this way. And what I'm going to do is build two of those, and one exactly the same on the opposite side. Something else that I also realized is that when I do that, I'm going to have a section 21 inches from here to the middle, which actually is what I'm going to need over here to fit around the rear console. Uh, that I realized was a problem if I built the boxes uh, the way I wanted to before I would have had to angle around that in order to clear the console and still have the top of the board go all the way to the back of the seat. So I'm hoping that when I'm not using this as a bed I will have two sections that will actually fit pretty snugly in the back of my vehicle that I can use for storage and still be able to use them as a bed. Now with the 28 inches for the two it's only going to equal 56 so I'm going to have to account somehow for the additional 10 plus inches and I plan on building a center section that will go in between somewhere in here and I'm not sure if I'm just going to build a, a hollow shell or if I'm actually going to make another box but I'll figure that out as I go. Now that the 28 inch boards have been cut you can see that they're pretty small and the back seat actually takes up quite a bit of room when it's leaned back like that. But at 28 inches it pretty much comes right back to the molding there. So a little bit smaller than I anticipated, but we'll make it work. So here's the first box in the back and as you can see it does come to the edge of the molding. And I do have some space there since I didn't contour it and then there's also some space back there. That'll turn into another storage area since the top board will cover that. And overall, it comes out to just under halfway across the back of the bed. And then when I add the two foot wide board, there is that overhang there again. Like I said, I can use that little pocket area as more storage. And it does still give me the full two foot width that I can use as a bed if I want to. But because of that and the way that that's set up, I will have to actually have this on a hinge that it opens up this way. I don't really have a choice about that. And I have thought about possibly cutting this in half and having it open up two different ways. So in case something's on top, I can just push it to the side and at least open up one side of the door and make it a little bit easier. And there it is with the back of the seat up. So as you can see, uh, at the top there, kind of bad with the shadow, but it does come right to the edge of the seat and since the seat angles back uh, that edge is touching and uh, it does come right to the edge of the molding so it's a pretty good fit now I'm just gonna start working on the second one here's both of them side by side now that the other ones framed out as you can see they both sit in there pretty good the other one I'm not sure how I'm gonna figure out the hinges on that one but I'll show you in a little bit what I might have to do uh, because that one's going to be the one that goes in the forward part of the Jeep when I actually use it as a bed but overall it fits pretty well like I said I'll figure out later on how I'm gonna keep these secure 
but now that uh, I have these two parts done, I can figure out the rest. And maybe in the future, I might even take these panels here on the back and turn them into drawers. But for now, uh, it's just going to be basic storage with the hinge on top. This is how it lays when it's end to end. And I ran into my first issue. I knew this would probably happen because when the seat's laid flat, there's a hump right in the middle. And I knew that that would probably cause it to be uneven. And of course it is, so that could be a little uncomfortable when laying on it. So my solution's probably just going to be to add about three quarters of an inch of wood underneath the back there. And that raises it up enough to make it level on the one side. On the other side it already is level, so I don't have to worry about that. And it won't make that much of a difference sitting in the back of the Jeep here um, when I'm using it for everyday use. So I'm not too concerned about that. And then I'm not quite sure, I'm still trying to figure out what I want to do here with the gap between the end of the box and the back of the seat because that is needed for the full width or else you can't lay end to end if you're about 5'8 like I am or a little bit taller. So I'm thinking about possibly just having this kind of flip up like that and figuring out a way to just have a swing out brace. Um, again, the person's head or feet are going to be there. It's not going to have any weight on it, just enough to uh, support it and keep it stable. So I'm going to go to the hardware store tomorrow and see if I can't come up with something that's an easy solution. And then that way it'll just stay on the back like that when it's in the, the back of the Jeep if I end up using it. And it shouldn't be a problem if I do that. I finally have hinges on one of them. And at the salvage store, I went the cheap route and thought this would actually work better than door hinges, but it didn't. And they're the semi-wrap overlay hinges. In my mind, they worked out really well. In reality, they were a ginormous pain because I had needed to make sure that the hinge itself did not protrude above the wood. And in order to do that, I had to not only notch out the wood, and I ended up using just an angle grinder because I didn't feel like digging out the jigsaw and trying to figure out how to get that in there to cut that out. There's other methods that I could have done to make it more clean, but this is the inside of it. So I had to do that and then I had to space with washers the actual hinge in order to bring it down and not protrude above the wood on this side. So other than cutting these bolts off, which I'll do a little bit later, that's how it's going to look. I'm going to go ahead and do the other one the exact same way now that I've got this figured out. It's uh, not the best, but it is on the inside. It does work for me on the outside. and it, does add also a little bit of space between the back of the seat and the overall box so it comes right up to the edge of the molding. It does work. Like I said it's not the prettiest but it's a functioning hinged box now. To show you what I'm talking about regarding the uh, hinge not being flush, if I were to just mount the plywood to the hinge I would have this protrusion up here. So what I need to do is create spacing with washers when I put the bolts in and raise it up so that it's flush like that one is in the back. And then something else that I had to look at was unless I wanted there to be more of a gap between the boxes when I put them together I don't want the hinges to line up so I need to put these hinges to the sides of the other ones so that they sit a little bit closer together. This section here is the part that is going to go towards the back of the front seat there. And the idea is to have brackets on it so that I can put this wood extension here and then flip it up. And that'll be a place for a person to put their pillow and give that little bit of extra length that's needed to lay end to end in the Jeep. 
And I'm using the same brackets that I used in the hinges in the back there. And I didn't have the holes in the right location, so I went ahead and pre-drilled holes so that I can just screw straight down. Now this isn't going to be part of the support structure. And what I've decided to do is use these brackets that will connect here. And I'm using this, uh, I don't know what you call it, but the hanger for the bracket. And I'm going to cut this off right about here and then screw it in the right location where this will be even with the board and that will provide the support and then when it's not in use you can just pop these off. This can stay screwed to the box because when it's closed like that, the angle bracket or the bracket, it just gives enough room that it will clear the wood if I mount the wood on the outside here. So I'm just kind of winging it here. I'm hoping this is going to work so we'll find out real quick. Instead of cutting the hanger, I decided to cut the bracket, and you can see the difference here and here, and I ended up cutting this section out, and that actually makes it so that this can just go right in now, and it works. So it does have a little bit of a lean forward. But what I'm going to do after I've got the right dimensions is just secure another piece of wood underneath. And if I do that, it shouldn't be a problem with clearance down here. And that's one thing that I'm going to have to look at too, is how that is going to clear the back of the Jeep when I have that here on the left hand side. So I'll have to take a look at that next. And I do have a clearance issue. Not only does the box stand up off of itself with the lid down or the, the headrest down, but it won't clear this as well. And it'd be okay if I had it closed and could just set it here. So I'm gonna have to probably cut it about where it's marked, which is fine because uh, actually it was kind of tight to begin with so by cutting that part off it'll make it function a little bit better when it's all put together okay got the board cut down and so now it's a little bit shorter and it slides in the back here it just clears the molding so i could even use it as a small table i guess if i wanted to when uh, i'm out on the trails or whatever but that wasn't the point of it, but it works. And now I'm gonna go check and see if it works on the front. So this is now the basic structure. After this, it's uh, just a matter of putting the bottoms on the boxes and figuring out a way to attach them to the Jeep in some way so that they don't move around while we're driving and a couple of things to point out i mean it does work as storage i need to possibly put some dividers in there I'll figure out some way to do that but i'm not going to video that and on the side here down at the bottom to deal with the gap all i'm going to do is just have this piece of wood down here and that actually keeps it pretty secure keeps these two pieces level and when I attach them together they'll pretty much be level with each other for the duration of the trip and then in the front here this did work really well so that just clears the back of the seat and the support structure does work so all that ended up being okay and then this one here opens up from the side and you can easily access it from the door versus my previous design that uh, wouldn't have really been able to access anything. 
um, when the thing was folded up. So that's pretty much it. It did take a bit longer than I thought it would just because of some silly decisions that I made. But overall, I'm pretty happy with it. I'm not going to video putting the uh, bottoms on the boxes. Or I think what I'm going to do is carpet, and I'm not going to show that either. But I will show the end result when it's all done and how I figured out to support it and also keep it together. So here's the finished storage unit, or mostly done anyway. So I said I wasn't going to film what I did here, and, and maybe I should have filmed some of it, but it's uh, self-explanatory for the most part. All I did was take felt that I had in 4x6 sheets that I had bought from a local salvage store for $5 a sheet, and instead of using the black outside, which traps dirt and sawdust and everything else really easily, I flipped it around and used uh, the back part of it. It actually matches the Jeep a bit better. Not that that really mattered, but uh, more importantly, it's a lot easier to clean and stuff doesn't get trapped in there. So, as well as doing the outside, uh, I did the inside as well. The bottom there is just a uh, tool liner. And so what I used were half-inch staples from an air staple gun. And there's about 500 of those in each box. I kind of went nuts with it. I didn't want this thing to move. And some stuff just wasn't staying like it was supposed to. So I beat it with staples. And then in the front here, same thing, except this one I ran out of uh, felt to put in. But overall, it worked out really well. I even covered the bottom block that I'm using to level this with felt and the headrest I covered that with felt. One thing that I did do is instead of trying to go around all the hardware uh, here, I took that all off and I didn't actually take off the hardware in here. I cut around it. It was just too much of a pain to get these door lids on so I didn't want to remove them. But I removed the hardware here and then put the screws back in and then wrapped the felt over the screw and cut a hole so that the felt could go over the screw and then when I put the hardware back all in place it was really easy to locate the holes rather than try to fight it. Uh, so that actually worked out really well. But now that that's in place and all the felt's on, as you can see it's very level. It's a lot more stable than it was. And now I just have to figure out a way to tie this thing down. Here's a view from the passenger side. And as you can see, it goes all the way up to the back of the seat. And that's with the seat pushed all the way forward and tilted forward as far as it'll go. And then with the hinges here in the middle, I'm able to open this up and get to stuff easily. And I don't know if I'll be able to show this to you or not, but with these brackets out, this does tilt forward. And then the seat can be pushed all the way back for the passenger. And then the next step will be making sure that all of this works as storage just in the back of the Jeep. So to make this bed a little bit more comfortable, because on my side I'm going to have a foam mattress and that is all I pretty much need. But with this it's just got the, the felt on top. So I want to find a way to put this on easily and I can actually just keep it in place the entire trip. And what I'm going to use is these elastic bands that I got from the salvage store. They're like three for 25 cents or something. And see if I can't just secure that foam mattress on top and have that in place if he decides to sleep in the Jeep. So that worked out really well. Even with just the six bands, it holds it firmly in place. And since whoever sleeps on this will be in a sleeping bag, your hands or feet won't get caught and they just won't be annoying in general. And since it's foam, it still lifts on both storage units. And the headrest, when it goes down, the foam will fold down with it. So as an afterthought, it's going to really work out 
and I think it's going to be useful when we're out on the trip. And that's what it looks like with both boxes in the back. There's enough clearance even with the headrest to close the hatch without an issue. And they're big enough to hold small chairs and other items that we're going to take with us. So overall, I'm pretty happy with the outcome. I still need to figure out how I'm going to tie it down, but that'll be another day. And I'll post an update at some point uh, about how I do that. Way different than I first anticipated and showed in a different video, but uh, kind of went with the flow and this is what I came up with and glad I went in this direction. It makes it a lot easier for moving things around and uh, it actually gives the full length of the compartment to lay down in as well as two huge storage areas that we can now use. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, comments, suggestions, feel free to leave them below and subscribe. Thanks.